interesting piece out this weekend in which you said, come on, let's get the Dow Jones Industrial Average together, or let's fix it because it ain't working right now. Did I get that right, Andrew? I don't know if it's not working right, but it certainly could use an overhaul for the 21st century. Uh, key companies like Apple and Google are not in the index right now, and it's hard to put them in the index now because the index is price weighted. Okay, let's take the two. First, let's go through what the Dow Jones right. average is, because many people, right. even though they see right. the numbers right. banded about, right. Dow Jones 10,000, Dow right. Jones 12,000, make a big deal about it. They don't understand what's in it. It's only 30 companies. It's 30, I mean, industrial companies mostly, also technology companies, and the index is literally weighted by the prices of the individual stocks. I IBM is, is at 200, has 10 times the weight of GE, which is around 20. Now, does that make any sense? It's I mean, put aside <laughs> the history of the thing. Put aside the nostalgia yeah. of the thing. I mean, put it, I mean, just as a numerical exercise, a statistical exercise, it doesn't make any sense, does it? it it's hard to justify that. I mean, no other average is constituted like that anymore. No one would, con would create an average like that anymore. Right. So you are saying, Andrew, and I don't want to right. put words right. in your mouth, and let me make it clear that the Dow Jones Company of which the News Corp is the owner, has a very small piece left of this average, but in general, kind of mostly out of it. It's owned by the CME right now, correct? It's a, it's a, it's a historical relic, the Dow Jones average, isn't it? So why, do we, why are we even talking about it? Because it's still the most popular, the most widely followed uh, equity index in the world, uh, despite its flaws and quirks and uh, other issues. But most people, most traders, you know, even a lot of investors, of which I am hmm. one, I look at the S&P right. 500 to right. give me the, it's a much broader right. gauge of, of how the stock market is doing, isn't it? That's true, and, but I mean, you turn on the news every night, you hear, hear about the Dow. Why? I think it's what people, the average investor still follows and still kind of knows, even right. if they don't really know some of the problems with it. Now let's talk about some of the problem children, problem child, problem children, I don't know what the phrase is, of the Dow Jones 30. We, we got companies like Alcoa. I mean, is Alcoa really a good proxy of what's going on in the rest of the economy right now? It's a good proxy for the aluminum market. I'm not sure how good a proxy it is for the uh, right. health of the economy. Look, we got the other ones. These are the ones that you, you pin, you put the, the, the finger on is they may have to go. Yeah. And Bank of America, Hewlett Packard. I mean, you, you'd have to say that as a gauge of the economy, probably uh, Google or Apple in particular is probably a better tell of what's going on in the world of technology and Hewlett Packard. And, I mean, that's certainly true. And but there's a problem with the, with the numbers now if you use, say, an Apple, which the stock is trading near 600 bucks. If you put Apple in the Dow right now, it would have about a 25% weighting. We kind of overwhelm the Dow. You would have 100 point moves, 200 point moves in the Dow simply based on what Apple does in a given day. Right. So, so you propose some kind of numerical. Jumping through hoops, I don't know what to call it in the you piece. Could, you could cap the weighting of Apple, so it would act more like a $200 stock, not a $600 stock. But if you were, if you were capping the weightings, and I know you know the answer huh. to this, then you're kind of getting away from the way the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is calculated right now. It, it's a tweak to it rather than an overhaul. So, and I think most people don't, don't even know how it's calculated, so they, they wouldn't care. They'd say, oh, Apple's in it. That's a good, good thing that we're reflecting the largest company now in the world by market value. Right. Now, who's, in whose interest is it to keep on promoting the Dow Jones Index as a useful index? Because as I've said, I don't, I don't get it anymore. I mean, isn't it true over the last couple of years, it's been pretty wide, I mean, everything is a matter of degree. But uh, while directionally, the Dow Jones Index and the S&P tend to move directionally right. together, there have been some pretty wide variances. Well, I mean, there's often a couple hundred, a couple percentage point gap between the performance in a given year. But I mean, the Dow Jones people argue that it tracks the S&P pretty closely, despite all the differences between the two. But you're right. I mean, it's it's not a perfect correlation anymore. So who's so who's promoting the Dow Jones Index anymore? Well, other I mean, than other than the news media, which every night announces Dow 12,000, Dow 13,000. Well, I mean, I think that the owner of the index, the CME, is interested in it because there are ETF now traded on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and to the extent that it's a relevant, important index, more people will invest in ETFs and other products linked to it, and therefore the CME will simply make some money off that. Okay, final question for you, yeah. Andrew Barry. I'm going to put you on the spot. Right. My aim here is not to get you in trouble with the CME right. or with Dow Jones. Will the Dow Jones Industrial Average even exist 10 years from now? It, will, it definitely will exist. It'll be will anybody pay attention to it? I think so. I think habits are hard to break.